discuss about uh, two important maps namely the gauss map and the weingarten map so which are uh, very much helpful further uh, to define two important curvatures namely the gaussian curvature and the mean curvature so for any surface uh, if you consider at any point try to look at its normal and uh, the way that this normal varies at and around the point p will actually let us know how the surface is say for example if you have a point and if you look at its normal if it is varying in a faster way at and around the point it means that the surface is highly curved and suppose if the same normal is been present everywhere around the point p if it is the same that enables us to know that the surface is a plane so keeping this uh, normal in fact specifically keeping this unit normal into the picture we will try to relate the points of the surface to its normal and uh, this the mapping that means the relation that we are going to define for uh, the points of the surface to the normals so in fact we'll uh, do it by using a map and that map is nothing but our gauss map so let's try to see what is the definition of this gauss map and uh, in fact we'll try to see how geometrically it looks like so yeah so the gauss map uh, in fact we denote it by g index s where this s talks about the surface on which we are talking about the gauss map so as i earlier said so the gauss map usually is been mapped from the surface s to the unit sphere s square what we are actually doing is we are trying to map the point p of the surface to its normal unit normal at the point p which will be in s square so this definition let's try to look at in a geometrical sense suppose if you take this surface so say for example if this is a surface so let's consider a point p so at this point p we will have a normal so let me denote it by using uh, this so let me call this point as normal i mean this is nothing but our normal so we denote it by np so now this point whatever we got on this surface s yes, we are trying to map it to a unit sphere so s square so what we exactly doing you look at this normal since this is a unit normal this is of unit length i am just going to translate this in such a way from the origin it exactly touches here from the origin it exactly touches here could you see that why because this is a unit normal i am just placing it here and here i will get a point and uh, because for the point p you had the normal np and this point p i am going to shift using our gauss map and the point if this touches the point on the sphere so that point let me call it as g of p because for this point p you got g of p on this unit sphere how did you get you took the normal at the point p and when you placed this normal here that gave you the point g of p on the sphere so that is how we tried mapping the point p to its own normal this normal is np only we just translated and that np gave us a point on the sphere so this is how we tried mapping and now what exactly we are doing is we are trying to look at its uh, tangent planes so for example for this point p if you try to look at its tangent this is a tangent plane so let me call it as tp so tangent plane at the point p of course we will denote it by s saying that so this point is on the surface s yes. so if you try to look at this normal and the tangent plane they are perpendicular could you see that and on the same way you try to draw the tangent plane for the point g of p on the sphere unit sphere so that that looks almost like this could you see that but then what is the relation between this normal and this tangent plane let me call this tangent plane as tangent at the point g of p of s square unit sphere so this normal of course this normal is same as this normal and this tangent plane they are perpendicular and this normal and this tangent plane are perpendicular in fact uh, one can easily observe that the tangent plane at the point p of the surface s is equivalent to the tangent plane at the point g of p which is on the unit sphere of s square so these are almost the same so why we are trying to relate these two things is if you try to look at the way this normal varies across the surface that means what the rate at which this normal changes so that is nothing but the rate at which the normal changes varies so these are things are been given by 
the derivatives isn't it the rate is nothing but a derivative so how one can get the derivative of the normals we are in fact getting the normals here by using the gaussian map when we wanted the rate of variation of this normals we will just try to consider the derivative of the map because the derivative of the mapping will give us the derivative of the normals here since we are interested to find out the rate at which the normal varies we are interested to talk about the derivative of the gauss map which are denoted by d of g which will give us the rate at which the normal varies but then this derivative of gauss map is been defined from where to where if you look at the normal the normal is been present here when you try to look at its derivative of the normal the derivative of the normals will be present in the tangent plane so this derivative of the gauss map is been defined from the tangent plane at the point p of s to where this is to the nothing but the gauss map is been mapped from surface s to surface s square isn't it now the derivative of this will be defined from tangent plane of the surface to the tangent plane of of course the point was g of p to s square isn't it but then just before we have seen that the tangent plane of s square and tangent plane of s both are equivalent so one can easily say that the derivative of the gauss map is been defined from the tangent plane of s at the point p to the tangent plane of p to s because these two are equivalent so once if you have a function which is been defined on the same sets or the same domains we can easily see that this is our this is a linear operator isn't it so therefore one can easily talk about the derivative of g so we have started with the gaussian map and then we ended up with its derivative so why we require this derivative is so now we are going to define the weingarten map which is denoted denoted by w of course say for example at the point p for the surface s yes, this will be nothing but the negative derivative of your gaussian map so the negative derivative of your gauss map will give you the weingarten map so i'll just brief you out once again because we started with our gauss map where it is been defined from surface this is the surface to the unit sphere s square where each point of the surface was been mapped to the normal so what we did you take any point on the p at the surface there will be a normal np and for of course it is unit normal so this point p i am going to map it to its normal np and this normal np will touch a surface unit sphere which i am just represented by g of p so now at the point p you construct your tangent plane which is t of p of s which is perpendicular to the normal and of course for the point g of p which is on the unit sphere if you construct a plane which is also normal normal which is also perpendicular to this normal so one can see that these two are of course parallel and in fact they are equivalent in fact one can check in the, in terms of vector space they will become equal i mean equivalent at least so therefore by using this then we talk about the rate at which the normal varies the rate at which the normal varies because that is how as i said initially by the variation of this normal at and around the point p we can talk about the surface so the rate of these normals will be given by the derivative of that derivative of what we got the normals by using the gaussian map so we we wanted the rate of change of normals so you talk about rate of change of the gaussian map so this is been given by dfg and uh, the derivative of the gauss map is been defined from the tangent plane of the surface because the gauss map was been defined from s to s square so the derivative of them will be defined from the tangent plane of them to tangent plane of this so this in fact we are talking only at the particular point p we can take out at any point of the surface and we can define in the same way so thus we can see that the derivative of the gauss map of course for the point p is been defined from deep tangent plane of s to tangent plane of s because these are equal and of course we are checking at only at the point p and then by using this derivative of the gauss map having with a negative sign we talk about a weingarten map so here wp of s is nothing but weingarten map at p for the surface yes so this could be defined as a negative derivative of gauss map yes uh, so one small correction here uh, the derivative of the gauss map at the point p is i said it's a linear operator but you can specifically say that it's a linear map and uh, yes that's how we define the gauss map and the weingarten map and these two maps will be further used to define uh, the gaussian curvature and the mean curvature thank you 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8